am I so good to you? Let's see if it's all clear, Vermin. I get in the sarcophagus. You close the door. With my foot, I activate the hidden false bottom. You open the door. The audience is stunned. I'm gone. It's completely empty. Understood? Mistress, where do you want the large sarcophagus? What sarcophagus? Mm, but looking like that? Hey, we're going to be there in three seconds. Give me an Egyptian head honcho's name. Uh, Amenophis. Three. The third. Yep, it's me. Draw and quarter him. I am the Supreme Head Honcho of Metaphys III, Lord of Egypt, quarterback of the Nile, MVP of the... Be still. Amenophis the third. The third in the flesh. I don't know if I remember. Why have you come? I'm lost. Ever since I lost the dame that gave my life meaning. Speak. Which woman is that? I'm looking for the High Priestess Kromha, the woman with the best front end I've ever seen. You're looking at her. Baby, I'm your midnight camel driver. Your brashness tempts me. Your tongue is altogether too loose, Amenophis. But you're lucky that I'm so good. Come with me. Finally, Dan had done it. He had teletransported himself to the Temple of Eternal Illusion, and, if nothing went wrong, he'd live to tell the tale. But unfortunately, the future wasn't looking very bright for everyone involved. Good afternoon, Miss Allaire. Are you hungry? Twenty. Why did you knock me out? Twelve. What did you do to me? One, my head and my left ear ache. Four. If you come any closer, I will bite you. At least the pain should pass within the hour. The captain would like... Would like you to dine with him. Put this on. No. Today's the first of the month. Do it, or... I never dress in black on dates that are prime numbers. Or you'll die naked with the crew. You've got a point. It's actually more dark gray. Can I untie me? So... How was it for you? It was wonderful, Amenophis. I haven't had a man treat me like that in a long time. No less than what I deserve. Good for you, now. Now you will be my guest. I'll treat you right, and you'll stay by my side forever. Honey, I'm more of a short-term guy. That's not the impression I got. Uh, a question of practice. Do me a favor, call your robots and tell them to open the sarcophagus in the theater for me. Ah! You just can't be good in this life, can you? Amenophis III, not everything in this house can be had so easily. Forget it. I'll ask the robots myself. And you? They'll never listen to you. Dr. Zelsius programmed them to obey only the person who is wearing the pendant I have on. And which, as you can see, I never take off under any circumstances. Fascinating. Yes, Dan said. Fascinating. But he was really thinking, sooner or later, that pendant will be hanging around my neck. Because things being what they are, I'm going to need it to teletransport Big Albert to Fly's laboratory. You're mine, Amenophis. Take care of my desires and you'll never want for anything. Otherwise, just ask the Oracle of the Shadows. One missing. What a shame. Madam. Speak. There's only one thing that interests me. You. So, what's it like being a mummy? It has its pros and its cons. 
Being dead means I don't have to shave my legs as often, but having to have your bodily fluids changed every 15 days is a bit of a pain. I'm much better at it than any other mummy, of course, but it's still a pain. How did you get into illusionism with all the money you have? I'm better at it than anyone else, and I like it. And maintaining a body like mine isn't exactly cheap. I could go on talking about you forever, but... So where is this Oracle of the Shadows? Go out that door and over to the other side of the room till you reach the double doors. You'll recognize him without a doubt. Come on. Let me have the pendant. Never, Amenophis. I will give you many things, but never that. Command me to kiss you, darling. <laughs> what a guy. Now do it, or I'll have you drawn and quartered. Advice from an expert. Never shut your eyes when kissing. I have to leave you, for now. With a mansion the size of a stadium, who had the bright idea of putting the bathtub in the bedroom? And then while he's at it, the refrigerator, doghouse, and the toilet. Apart from Tavi the Third, I don't get along too well with the Vegetable Kingdom. Half my paycheck says that the cows on the posts are gods. I hate beetles. The thing is, I only see males. It makes sense, or there'd be a massacre. A nose like an anteater. Half my paycheck says he's the oracle. You there, Mr. Timid, are you the... I am the oracle of the shadows. Good to see you. I am the supreme head honcho of... <laughs> what a guy! You're Daniel Murray, chronicler of sports contests, author of bedroom contests. You're trying to get Krom Ha's pendant using cunning ruses, but she'll never surrender it to you. Your only chance is to send her back to the land of the dead, which she should never have left. I get it. And how do I do that? You shall read the Book of the Dead. Fascinating. Is it very long? Very dangerous, even for a scribe like you. If you misread the hieroglyphics, you could bring about the opposite and bring hell to the land of the living. Cataclysmic, hetacombic. I will test your metal, scribe. You shall bring me eight hieroglyphics, not seven or nine, but eight, said the oracle. With these, I shall give you a syntax test, and if you pass, I shall take you to the Book of the Dead. Seems like Krum Ha has some escape artist numbers. Hey, what do you know? A mummy! I'd swear that... Okay, now I see. We're playing a shell game, are we?
Well, these sarcophagi don't say anything to me. All the dough I've won after hearing, Murray, old chap, ten cents says you can't guess which one of the three bowls holds the marble. Dan, a natural gambler, couldn't resist the temptation. So he decided to decipher the tricks behind the mystery of the seven sarcophagi and the mobile mummy. That's it. I win the shell game. Dan said to himself, proud of having figured out the trick behind the sarcophagi. It was easy. I just had to pay attention. The sarcophagus arc always moves several steps to the right of the last place it appeared. Five to be specific. What does a mummy that kicked the bucket millennia ago want with a dagger? No reason. Hey, you! You there! Exit prohibited, human! You have no authorization to leave the temple! I wasn't planning on leaving. Do you know why? Because I don't want to. Because the staff I'm holding is ancient! It was made at the beginning of the Narmer Dynasty! Fascinating. Over 5,000 years ago! Good for you. The older a staff is, the more powerful it is! I'm happy for you. So you won't be able to get by me, no matter how hard you try. A piece of advice. Get a life. <laughs> what a guy. The robots are stunned. I'll go up to the sarcophagus casually. Halt, comrade. Anything wrong? Not as far as I'm concerned, comrade. Absolutely nothing. Just following orders. In English. Chrome House orders were extremely clear. If Comrade Amenophis gets near the sarcophagus, draw and quarter him. I get it. Nothing personal, of course. I happen to like you. Good for you. I'm Petzo, at your service. Pay no attention to my comrade Ducky. He's out of it. Back to Ducky. Why do you say that he's out of it? Because he's stupid. And I mean stupid, stupid, stupid! Is he good for anything? Don't insult him, comrade. We are all part of the proletariat. There are parrots on skates, poodles that dance, and then there's Ducky, who does magic tricks, thinks, and sings. Tell Ducky to do a trick for me. You fool! Do some magic! Changing the subject. Hey, uh, hey, uh, comrade. After one tap of the magic wand, and he's inside the top hat. It was inside the top hat until Ducky tapped it with the magic wand and made it switch places with the rabbit. Top hat and magic wand. Long live originality. I don't believe in magic, but one must be practical. Where's the trick? 
Incredible but true. This is a royal stupid... Duh! Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Dan Murray, fooling around, first try. Did it work? If my powers of deduction don't fail me, inside there's a spinning rabbit. Mine again. I'm not going to ask by what absurd logic it's here. I don't want to get dizzy. Do not dare to leave the temple, human! How many Aprils has your staff seen, friend? Five thousand years of primary power that since the Narmer dynasty... I see your five thousand and raise you a grand. What's it going to be? Huh? I have a six thousand year old bat. It's positively dripping with power. How do I know you're not lying, human? When you'll see it, you'll flip. Something that beat up just has to be old. Look. Do you believe me now? Stand back, human. I possess a 6,000-year-old bat whose power is so lethal that... A little single-minded, aren't you? Impressive. The drawing has its charm. I've always been good at these things. As a boy, my room was full of street signs. You wanted little symbols? Now you have them. There's one. You wanted little symbols? Now you have them. There go two. Not two, but one. The duck is a hieroglyphic, but the one on the other side is a drawing. Sorry. You wanted little symbols? Now you have them. Four at one time. That's me. You wanted little symbols? Now you have them. There's one. You wanted little symbols? Now you have them. There's one. Eight hieroglyphics mine eyes do see, said the oracle. Not seven, not four, not three, not... Can we get to the point or what? Two! Now, at last, you will have to confront the five questions of Egyptian syntax. Not one, not nine, not... Why are you looking at me like that, scribe? Let's get to work. Go ahead, then. First question. Identify the main verb in the following sentence. The sne- Not bad. Second question. What is the direct object of the following phrase? The lap- Good. You have chosen wisely. Third question. Which hieroglyphic acts as the nucleus of the subject in this sentence? The 
the bad. Good, not poor, not excellent, not satisfactory, not bad, neither here nor there, but good. Fourth and second to last in question, one of the following hieroglyphics cannot be conjugated in the passive voice. Which is it? The du astonishing. You weren't fooled by the double noun and the adjectival nucleus of the subject, eh? You're talking to Dan Murray. Not to worry. Fifth and last question. Which hieroglyphic begins the subordinate clause of the noun? The sne- Exam passed. How did you do it? By paying attention, said Dan. The answer in all cases was the hieroglyphic in the same position in both the tablet and in the phrases that appeared for me to choose from. What phrases? Forget it. My life is more complicated than it looks. So let's get on with this book of stiffs. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, take this. Oh, these bugs are disgusting. Couldn't you come up with anything worse for me? It is the key that opens the door to the chamber that holds the Book of the Dead. Good. I'll just have to find the courage. That is in. 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 I can't. I can't do this to her. I love her. Nothing worse than a lovesick oracle. Give it back to me. Take a seat and wait. Where's the book? I'll never tell you. Never. I can't help you to do her in. My light, my joy. How many millennia have I loved her for? Not four, not seven, not eight, not twelve, not one, not thirteen, not... Have fun. I can't handle saccharin. I really can't. The worst thing is that the halfwit didn't give me the full scoop. I still don't know where the Book of the Dead is, but half a paycheck says that I find it with this pot. Now that I think about it, the ones in the pond are all males, and mine is a female. It's locked! Cursed Book of the Dead! Both have a star. Do they fit together? Touchdown! And now... Don't you dare. You'll end up feeling sorry for me and then I'll have to destroy you. Do I look like my name is Sister Daniela? No. Let's get on with it then. Which one of these five passages is it? Three-legged creature, black eye, grocery bag. Silly fool! You're waking up the dead! It's to make it more exciting, dear. Hourglass, girl in profile, sick bird. You're going to get us all sent to hell, Amenophis! What's bothering you is that you'll be first. Three crude slash marks. Anachronistic slot machine. Oh, please! 
Take pity on me, Amenophis. Ah, oh, it just doesn't pay to be a good person. Darling, hand over the pendant and go on your merry way. Now that he had the pendant that controlled Kromha's robots, Dan was in the driver's seat. Now for the false bottom of the sarcophagus. Hurry. Well, this guy's seen better days. Right, man. What's his problem? He's in bad shape. He's completely brainless. Finally, Dan had managed to teletransport Big Albert's body to Fly's laboratory. But now there was a new problem that they didn't have a solution to. Where was his brain? <laughs>